You're listening to the Live Out Loud podcast with River Wynn and Michelle Flamer. Good morning, River. Good morning, Michelle. How are you? <laughs> I am great. And it feels kind of funny to be chatting over Zoom right now because we've been doing Marco Polo all morning up until like right when we hit record. I, I, reali- I realize you brought your pink friend with you today. It's the pink friend. <laughs> it um, It's just so phallic. It's like, how can we not have a phallic microphone? So absurd. It's so absurd. Oh my God. It's and so absurd. And, and it's making our, our guests our, laugh our hysterically, guest, I can see. <laughs> our guest is cracking up because we've got Samantha Fox back. Number three, baby. Hi, Samantha. Hello. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is quite a mic there. You like my <laughs> microphone? <laughs> He's done a few stories around it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, could be any other color too. Like why? <laughs> Do they have know. them in tan and other skin tones? <laughs> <laughs> There's a good variety. There's a good variety. But I saw the pink and I was like, mm, we're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it. I love it. Um, so Sam, why don't you tell people who may not know who you are a little bit about you and maybe what your, um, what, you know, today's focus, 2024 into 2025, your focus is for, uh, you know, how your business is evolving. Sure. So hi everybody. Um, I'm Samantha Fox, uh, known as the lesbian curiosity coach And I have basically lived an experience over many years of coming out later. I came out at the age of 32 and lived many, many years of life unpacking and unlearning and unleashing myself and have created a program for women or female at birth people um, that helps you do just that unpack, unlearn, and unleash yourself from really all of the conditioning that society has placed upon us as women in the world. So um, this is a program that's for people who are curious about their sexuality, questioning their sexuality. They're already out. They're maybe divorced. Maybe they've never been married. Um, You know, they might be partnered, newly partnered, but they are experiencing feelings that are keeping them from really being able to fully be authentically who they are. It might be shame. um, It might be guilt. It might be anxiety, whatever it is um, that is really keeping you from being able to live your full authenticity. So I've developed a program um, called Unbox Your Sexuality. So that is what uh, currently I have up and running. And um, I'm just about to offer uh, a free resource called uh, Three Steps to break free from compulsory heterosexuality. So that is Mm. coming this week. Um, And yeah, I've been doing this for a number of years. I absolutely love it. I'm also a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I work with couples around sexual intimacy, relationships. So it's kind of a relationship expert. Um, And a lot of my own life things come into all of that, including that I just lost my father in March Mm -hmm. And I'm grieving the loss of the second parent and taking the next few months really just to kind of be status quo in all that I am doing, but not do anything new. So I'm not creating any new Mm -hmm. programs. I'm just kind of, you know, being in the space that I have been in and trying to spend some time grieving. River's going to really appreciate this because Sam is learning how to slow down. Yeah, that's a big theme right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's so needed. It's yeah. needed and it's hard. It's really hard when that's just not the way you've lived. So no, that's not how our society is set up. You know, we're, we're hustle, hustle, hustle all the time. And especially for women, um, I was actually listening to another podcast this morning about mothering. And that was she was talking about that topic of um, women feeling really guilty when they slow down mm-hmm. because it makes them feel like they're lazy or they're not doing what they quote unquote should to, you know, for their family from as a mother. Um, and I think it's, it's so valuable if you can give yourself the space and time to slow down. Who the hell started this shit? Like why the, like we came from UK and like London and other places where they have six weeks off and like America is built on this two week regime of vacation 
And I, I really have valued and appreciated some things on LinkedIn lately because some companies are switching to a four day, 10 hour work week just to give them like Michelle, you know, a friend of the podcast, as well as one of my other besties is like, she actually, they all pitched in to like tell the CEO that they all wanted and voted on having summers Friday off, like half, like at one o'clock. And so now they get like almost a three day weekend. And she said, that's such a game changer. It's, it's huge. My, my kid's dad has Monday through Thursday work. So he gets to have Friday, Saturday, Sunday with our kids. And um, that's been really great for them <laughs> being able to have access to a parent like that. And then, then for him to be able to spend that time with them, I think that's, yeah, you know, sometimes two days really great at all. No. So, so today's episode though, we are talking, you know, like kind of how we are all talking here is utilizing and ta uh, maybe apps or, um, you know, FaceTimes or, um, different technology to stay connected to your friends, whether they're long distance, whether it's just, you know, even if they're across town and we just, again, we don't have time sometimes to like create these intentional adult relationships um, based on our fucking schedules. I mean, so <laughs> Sam turned me back on to Marco Polo. Like I used it for just a very small amount. Again, like you river, I'm like, how many abs do we need? But Sam and I became great friends and she's like, Hey, jump on Marco Polo. So Sam, tell us, tell us your experience with Marco Polo and why you love it. Yeah. I mean, I've been using Marco Polo. I don't know when it started, but it feels like it's been about 10 years or close to 10 years. Um, and I honestly don't even remember. I think I started with friends on the West coast that I just, mm -hmm. They also had three kids. I had three kids and, you know, we have careers and, and everyone is just busy. And it was like, let's find a time to talk, to talk. Let's find a time to talk. And never, I mean, months would go by and we couldn't find a time to talk. And then I found out about this app where you just do a video recording of yourself talking, you know, like you're basically talking to yourself, but you're talking to the person. And then whenever they have that time, they can watch it in parts and pieces, you know, you know, whenever, like when they're brushing their teeth or whatever, and then respond when they have free time. And it just created this ability to connect to people that were impossible to connect to for years that had been like friends from when I was 19, who I love dearly, but life just happens and we get so busy. Um, and then I just started using it really like to stay in touch with all of my friends and have built friendships with people that I've never met in person like you, Michelle. I know, I know. But, yeah. But other friends that I have on the West coast that when I started my business, I met, I've never met in person, but we're like, I mean, I know everything about their life and like, we're best friends. So I love Marco Polo. It's, it's so amazing. And it's like yeah. fun to see you have a little notification and like your friend reached out to you and you can't wait to hear what's going on with them. I just love it. It's true. Do you use God. it solely for friendships or do you use it with like coaching clients too? Or is it mostly, mostly just like friendship personal? Yeah. I mean, up until now, I've really only used it for friendship because all of my coaching is on my Mighty Networks platform mm -hmm. and I use loom.com for that, which is kind of similar in that it's a video and you can, it's easy to send your video with just copying a link. Um, but Marco Polo is like, it's just this immediate back and forth. Um, and it's like a diary of your you know, you can go back and watch something that you missed, or if you forgot and a few days went by, you can go back and see what your friend said before you respond to them. It's just so helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because for me, like, um, I grew up, uh, I, I, not huge ADHD, but I do have ADD a little bit. And then with my dyslexia, but beyond that, I realized how literal I am that here, that reading text, I miss the context, the tone, unless I've known you for like a long time and get the tone, I have a really hard time. So for me, Marco getting to know like you, Sam, and like, you know, and then having River now on there um, or any other friends that have, have sort of are new in this last, you know, year. Um, we have little group chats now for club lilies, some of the AZ lilies and, it's so much nicer to see expression and, mm -hmm. and hear the tone. And you kind of get to know that friend's face. Like you would, if you were like in our twenties or like at high school when you were like with them every day. 
Yeah, the other, yeah, the other yeah. Thing, I, I just wanted to say, River, your question is, do you, have you only used this for friendship? I've uh -huh. also been in all long distance relationships except for the first one. Yep. And mm. I used it in my relationships also because texting it, like what Michelle, what Michelle said is so hard. You can't really read the context. It's yeah. easy to not, you know, to get lost in there. Plus, but we're in our fifties. Like I text with one thumb. <laughs> Yeah. I get tired, like it's, it's, it's or I'm tiring. doing voice text, and then I'm like, "Well, why don't I just show you my face and I can I'm, see everything?" And then I'm, I'm in my late thirties, and I still hate texting. <laughs> I can <laughs> much rather a send lot. a video chat or a voice note. Same. But I think Same. you're right, like using it with long distance because I'm using it with my long distance right now, and it just makes it makes it so nice. And we don't interrupt each other. That's the other thing that we found. It's like we can tell a childhood story or we can talk about whatever's coming up for us and not be interrupted. I, I don't realize like how for my family, we're all interrupters. So even just having a platform where I can actively listen to my friend, whatever it is about, or for me to be able to just talk without that interruption, I didn't realize how freeing that is. I will tell you, as someone who is very ADHD, neurodivergent, like the interrupting thing is such a huge struggle sometimes. I mean, even for me with us, you know, recording the podcast, it's like there's this fear that if I don't say what I need to say at the moment that it comes up, I'm going to forget about it. And I likely am going to forget about it. And so then there's this constant struggle of, oh, do I just say it and interrupt someone or do I try to contain it and focus on keeping that thought in track while also trying to listen to what they're saying so I can come back? And it's, oh my gosh, like from the outside looking in, people tell me sometimes I look really calm and chill and all that. But inside my brain, I'm just like, there's this mental battle going on constantly. <laughs> and so being able to not only listen to someone's video and then be able to pause it and like then share my thought and then come back and finish their video, that's amazing. And then also to be able just to like free flow my thoughts into a video without having to take the time to text it. Because also, because my brain is just going a million miles an hour most of the time, sitting down and texting sometimes is harder because I, it takes so long to put my mm -hmm. thoughts into actual physical words like that. Well, and then the cool thing about Marco Polo, depending upon um, what plan you have, there is a little note taker. And, and I will say like, sometimes with Sam, like if it's going to be a lot, like I can see like when she starts to talk and I can see, Oh, this is a long one. So I get my <laughs> notes out because I do want to hit or I mm. or get a pencil out and I make notes because I want to make sure that, you know, I I'm hitting those questions or, you know, a thought or something that I want to interject, but you I have to wait because I'm going to listen to it. It's not like it's a, it's a two way conversation. Yeah, I like that. And then, and, you know, also being neurodivergent for me, you know, you said earlier, like being able to see people's tone and like at the context, like body language is huge. I think sometimes for me, I come across in texting as very dry and sarcastic sometimes because that's kind of how my humor is. Right. But people don't always catch that because there's so much missing in terms of body language. Um, so then being able to like express that to people and their understanding kind of where like what's going on with me because they can see my cues and my body language. Um, but then also for me, being able to see it from other people really helps the conversation and I don't mistranslate anything. Did, so helpful. You know, like Sam, did, did you find that you used it a lot more during COVID and stuff or did you, mm -hmm. did you use it with your kids? I tried with my daughter mm -hmm. and she's 24 now. So I tried with her probably when she was about 22 and it just didn't take, I mean, it's really interesting. I think the, like, and I don't know, I can't speak to the younger generation, but I don't know that it works for them the way mm -hmm. it works for us. That's just a feeling that I have. I could be wrong, um, but um, I haven't used it with my kids. I have used it during COVID. It didn't matter, COVID, pre-COVID, post-COVID. Like 
this, this app is my best friend. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. know how I would just with how busy I am that like when I'm going to get a snack in between sessions, I can leave a message. I can listen to a message. Like I can stay connected, um, which when you work um, alone, which I do work alone at mm -hmm. home now, mm -hmm. um, it's really isolating. So I feel very lucky that I can connect to other people during my day and, and multiple different people. Mm. Yeah, that's so true. I, I like the aspect of like, when we're like doing normal stuff, like when you're walking the dogs and I, and I can hear New York city in the background and, you know, I just feel like I'm like hanging out next to you and it's really, really fun. Or when river has the kids and all of a sudden I like use it for, you know, I push the little unicorn and, and there's fun little, you know, um, you know, we can write and we can draw on it. And like, oh, you know, when so my daughter had her autism evaluations two weeks ago. And um, when we were at the appointment, Michelle was doing Marco Polo with her and it was really helping her because it distracted her from the stress of what we were doing. Um, but then she also didn't have to be like fully present to have like a full conversation. And so she got to like share these fun little clips with Michelle and then Michelle was giving them back to her and they're playing games back and forth. And it really just helped her kind of keep her peace and calm and normalcy in the midst of all of that that we were doing. It was really fun. And she she really loves it. She she asked me almost every single day, can we Marco Michelle today? Can we Marco Michelle today? <laughs> well, I get texts from her now through River, obviously, <laughs> through River's text. And so a little a little gift will come up and I go, hi, Ivy. You know, I text hi, uh, Ivy. It's so funny because she'll and be then... on the iPad playing her games and she'll send you like screenshots or whatever she's doing and then she'll send it to you, but then I don't see it until you respond. And then I see it pop up on my phone and I see all these messages my daughter sent you. I'm just like, Ivy, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's okay. And then she'll text me, mom doesn't want me to bug you. So cute. It How is. old is Ivy? She's turning nine. Okay. Very yeah. cute. Yeah. yeah, she's she's a rad little kid, though. Um, she is. No, but it is. It's interesting. I mean, because we have Instagram, we have I like I'm not a big Facebook lover. The only thing I use Facebook for these days is like groups and mm -hmm. like any, or if any family wants to tag me in something or, you know, things like that. But it, for for me, Facebook is really all about the memories at this point, that memories, you know, piece that pops up and shows you like six years ago and things like that. But that doesn't keep me engaged with my close posse, you know, our front row. I, so I feel like Facebook is kind of like an information space now where it's like, I'll go on if I like as a photographer, if I want to like advertise my, my client sessions, you know, like I'm doing dates for many sessions, I'll go in there and I'll post it or I'm looking for something. And then that we have like our buy nothing groups locally, I'll go on there and I'll post things in the buy nothing group. And it feels just so informational. And like you said, like the memories from like the past popping up, Whereas Instagram feels like way more business oriented, I feel like, but like in a personal kind of way, like your relationship building as a business, like your owner. personal brand space. Yeah. It's your, it's your brand. Um, it's a creative brand space. Um, and then, you know, TikTok, like I try to do TikTok, but man, you know, for it's me, I really just don't like having a bunch of apps, like having to do all of them is just so overwhelming. So like I use Instagram, I use a little bit of Facebook and now I get to use Marco Polo with friends, which yeah. is great. <laughs> it is. It's so fascinating. Um, yeah. I mean, just building friendships. I mean, it's one thing to like create and, and, you know, build new friendships in general, like as an adult, but it's like also being so intentional. And I think when you find your tribe, you know, it's so lovely when you get met in that space of like, mm -hmm. Hey, I see you. I recognize you. Cause Sam was like, we were trying to figure out it, I think I sent her a first message. I think something cute with her last relationship. And, and we were like trying to figure out, but I was like, I think Jamie Messina introduced me to you because she was talking about you. And I thought you were on her podcast and you're like, no, I've never been on that podcast. And then it was just so funny, but we just on our first, when she was on a guest for our first episode, right river. And mm -hmm. then, and then Sam and I are like, yeah, we need to be friends. Like we just knew instinctively that we were, we were each other's people. Like it was so cool. You know, yeah. what's so cool though. I, I really, it, it constantly blows my mind. I was talking about this with my daughter the other day. I was explaining to her how my best friend and I, we met when we were six years old and she, her family was in the military. And when we were, let's see, 
eight, eight or nine, they moved to Japan. And they lived in Japan until I was 18 years old. And we stayed best friends. But the only way we got to communicate was through written letters. Yeah. And so we would send letters back and forth. And then we had a journal that we would actually send back and forth in a package every couple of months. Wow. And then two or three times a year, our parents would pay for us to do a phone call long <laughs> distance from Japan. And we'd have to coordinate schedules and time and all of that. And it blew her mind when I was explaining that because now it's so easy to have long distance, like you can have international long distance friendships. And I have several of those um, where even though maybe one of us is sleeping and the other one's working, we still get to communicate because of the technology that, that we have. And I, I look back at my childhood and, you know, I'm 36. And even when I was six years old, we didn't have that kind of technology, but yet my friend and I still, you know, built that relationship. But like, that was the only long distance relationship yeah, I had. Can you imagine her at that age having Marco Polo in her pocket, you guys, and like her showing you Japan and like things like it would have just been such a, it would just, oh my gosh. Yeah. And it was like, you know, we, during that time frame of like age um, eight till 18, we only saw each other twice in person, but they came back to the States for two visits. And it was like every couple of months, I get this box in the mail that had like Japanese candy and the journal and all the things. And, you know, like I would spend like I would save up and spend like 30 bucks to send her a, a gift at Christmas. And um, mm -hmm. so like looking back to that, like there was so much intentionality in that, you know, creating that friendship, but uh, so much work went yeah. into maintaining that friendship. And there would have been no way for me to do that with multiple people. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, you know, I have these amazing friendships with people on the other side of the world I've never even met, but because of technology, we get to have these beautiful growing friends and they're some of my best friends. Yeah. It's, it's really, really cool. I yeah, mean, I and just, that, yeah. that also river, that intentionality, you know, when you're a, a kid and I mean, your work is like going to school and like doing your homework and like, you know, mm -hmm. going to sleep on time or whatever, like those yeah. are the things you have to worry about and yeah. it's a lot of work then. But then you think of like being a parent and then being a single parent. Yeah. And the amount of work that goes into that, which yes. you know about and and I know about and Michelle, you now know about, um, it's just like even I think on the weeks, Michelle, when you have Caden and I'm like, if you need, if you want to hop onto a FaceTime to talk about something, like there's something bigger going on, you know, I'm here and you're like, well, you know, I can't, I can't because I've got Caden. It's like when you have kids everything becomes just that much harder and especially yeah. many times for friendships. It's just hard. And this app, Marco Polo just makes it so much easier for those, you know, few minutes, like literally I will be peeing <laughs> and mm -hmm. leaving a polo at the same time. Like, yep. what did I tell you river? I said, we have, yep. <laughs> I said, I said, Sam and I have upgraded. Michelle yeah. and I were Marco Polo each other on the toilet this morning. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and it's so funny because I'm so comfortable with that. And I'm so used to that, that sometimes I don't pay attention to who I'm pulling. Oh, no. My, my favorite is when she's like about to jump into the sauna or whatever. And she's like, here, look, I have something on. Like, cause she looks totally <laughs> naked. And she's like, I have a towel on. Yes. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I mean, I'm not seeing anything. It doesn't matter. But I was just like, oh, look at you, Foxy. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I'm dressed. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, it really, it really, it's just amazing. There's still intentionality around doing it and wanting to connect, but the difficulty of creating that intentionality is kind of gone with Marco Polo. You don't have well, to do and, any coordinating, none. Well, and sometimes you realize like, like this morning, Riv, like when we're just like, boom, 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 like back and forth. If if that's Sam and I, and like, I know, like, I don't have anything going on and I realize she doesn't, then I'm just like, I just FaceTime her. I'm like, look, let's just like, otherwise we're just going to keep doing this and we don't have to do that. Like sometimes you can break, break out and be like, I'm calling you on FaceTime right now. But yeah. you know what, for me, like being neurodivergent, like having to stay focused in a conversation is really hard sometimes. Yeah. And so for, for some people where like taking an hour to FaceTime would feel really great for me, it's like. That's an entire hour of my day that now I have lost time to do other things that were really important. Not yeah. to say that the friendship wasn't important or the FaceTime wasn't important. Oh, um, it's just that like being ADHD, it's really hard for me just to sit still and like 
focus in on a conversation for an hour. So being able to like send those messages back and forth like that without having to sit down and fully commit to being live on a call is is really amazing for my brain. I, I also think for new relationships, really I mean, I think for new relationships, especially, um, I mean, definitely in the queer community, I think it's really helpful. But if you have, if, if, if you're bisexual and you're dating a man who is emotionally intelligent, I think but you guys have very different attachment or communication styles. I think there's a lot to be said for using, utilizing a tool like Marco Polo, because like, like we were talking about, you can just sort of dip in a little bit and then dip back out. You can listen to it as many times as you need to like, let it integrate or, you know, um, and I think I told my therapist how we were kind of using it and from you being ND, um, and ADHD, especially it's like, um, it's really been helpful. And for who I'm dating, she's somewhat avoidant, or she at least used to show up more avoidant. This still really helps because again, like, you're like, thank you for not dipping out. And even though it took maybe two hours to respond, that's all good. Like, at least there's still like congruent or consistency within the conversation. You're not like, like on text, you have to reply, like, all of a sudden there's 10 text photos, boo, boo, boo. And then you're like, oh yeah, I have to go up and reply to that one to like, and in, and in Marco, you just sort of pick up exactly where you left off. And I think that's, I think that's the, the important, that's an important piece, at least for me, I need to feel heard. And if I have questions, I really do need them answered. Like it feels before I can kind of move on. I, you know, look, as you were saying that, I was thinking back to my marriage and one of the things that we, we had a struggle with was that, you know, I'd be at home with the kids during the day. Like I was such in mom kid mode. I was the primary caregiver, the household, you know, take your care of it. And I was also working and all of that. Um, and we barely saw each other because he'd be gone from like 6 a.m. to like 7 p.m., you know, 60 hours a week sometimes. And um, I would get texts throughout the day of like, how, how is your day going? How are the kids today? Um, and then if I wouldn't answer because I was busy with our kids, it would cause a lot of like stress and anxiety mm. for the other person. And I'm thinking back, I'm like, that would have been really cool to maybe have something like Marco Polo where we could send each other little, little video clips throughout the day, like with the kids or like, you know, just answering the question or like, here's our day, here's what's going on. And like, they could feel connected in that way versus feeling this pressure to sit down and respond to a text message and write it all out while getting interrupted by kids, <laughs> dogs and all the things like maybe that would be a helpful relationship tool as well for couples to stay connected throughout the day. Well, the cool thing is I actually use it with my mom too now. And, yeah? and she, yeah. And, but the funny thing is like, I'll send her one and she then thinks I'm super available. And then she FaceTimes me after <laughs> to tell me to answer me. I'm like, mom, answer me on Marco because I'm like heading out, but I wanted to like show you this or share this with you. And I didn't want to just send it to you in a text so you could like see my face. Cause I know it's important for her to see my face, you know, and things like that. So I'm, I'm going to try to get my brothers on it. Um, when I'm in Chicago in August at, at my little brother's, I'm going to see if we can uh, get my other brother going on it too. I'm just, I'm going to try to get them on a group text because I just think with siblings, that would be really nice too, because we all mm -hmm. have kids. We're all pretty busy schedules and we each have like my, my brother, Kenny, his kids at Brown, my kids just going into middle school. And then Joey's kids are all in priests. They're, you know, they're three and under four and under. And so it would just be fun to like, be able to share, you know, in our life experiences together, but, but yeah, you can like, if you're planning a group, a group, uh, trip, I think that's really fun to like create a group chat over Marco. And then people can be like, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. And I, I now realize like I can turn the camera around and say, Hey, this is what I'm looking at. Or, hey, look at this quote I thought of. And I just all really, it's just the more you sort of start to use it, the more your brain kind of figures out new cool ways to utilize it. Oh, just even as you're saying that, I was like, hmm, maybe I should get my dad and my auntie on a group chat with Marco Polo because we chat on Facebook chat every single day. <laughs> it would be so much more enjoyable for the Yeah, to see your them. Dad, your dad. <laughs> it's like you know, because that's what my mom does. I'm like looking up her nose half the oh time. 
My dad was so that too. It would be like on his forehead. I'd be like, dad, I can't see you. (laughs) That's so great. I mean, how is, have you been, you've been utilizing it, Sam, like through your grieving process too, like utilizing, it's almost becomes like a friend journal. Like it's almost, cause we, I think it's funny. We, we attract our tribe that processes the same freaking way. And we need that space to just talk through things. But River, having Sam as like a bestie and processing stuff. And she's like, okay, I'm going to put on my therapist lens for you right now. <laughs> or my I have questions for you. And I'm like, I don't want you to be my, I don't want to take away. Like, I don't, she's like, don't, no, no, no. We're like, this is, she's just, this is the way I process. Like, this is the way I think through things. That's so funny because, you know, like for me doing the life coaching and then I'm, I'm headed to grad yes. school to, you know, become a counselor and, and yes. do um, art therapy, you know? So when friends approach me with problems and issues, I have to say, do you want me to put on my therapist hat or would you like me to be a friend right now? I have to yeah. make that distinction. Like, do you want me to help talk you through this right now? Or do you want me just to like hold space for you Listen. to share what's going on? Yeah. And for me, it's like in, the, in those moments, I'm like, okay, I better be providing, you know, I, be, I better be providing add value for Sam too, because her expertise is like, you can't put a dollar on it. It is priceless. Mm-hmm. But like, as a friend for her, it's like, I go, okay, well, this is my 30 cents. <laughs> you know, <it's> like- <laughs> That's so, I mean, I, it's just literally like, before I was even a therapist, I was like this. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I just like mm-hmm. skill with training, but like I was already the same and probably would respond the same before I was even a therapist. So I love that. Yeah, that's just part of who I am. But I, another thing I wanted to say that I thought was kind of interesting, and I love the story, Michelle, about your mom, because like, again, like I said, the younger, younger, much younger generation, I don't know what they do with Marco Polo, but like then this older generation where like they just don't get it, like they don't understand your mom doesn't understand that like she's seeing your face and you're leaving a message means now she can leave you back a message but instead she calls she face her i mean it's so funny but it's like so that generation where it doesn't land like they don't get it um but then there are other people i have to say that i've encountered that i have tried to get onto polo and like get going with that it just it doesn't work and that mm-hmm. there is so much discomfort in them having to look at themselves. I mean, you don't even have, like half the time I'm not even <laughs> in the kitchen cooking and you're like looking at like, I don't know, the, the, the cabinets or something, you know, I'm running around the kitchen. I don't sit always in front of the polo. I'm doing a million things while I'm True. on it and talking. Yeah. But um, some people just can't get comfortable or they, I'm going to say they really struggle getting comfortable watching themselves while they're leaving the polo. And so they just don't warm up to it. They don't know what to say. It's just this like, real discomfort and the other piece about it. So that's there. But then the other piece about it is honestly, I think for me being extremely introverted, um, I am a highly introverted person. So shy that doing polo for all these years was a huge help for me to be able to Mm. start to post content. Mm. And so when people have problems, like they're starting their business and they're like, Oh my God, like face to camera. Ah, you know, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, get polo, start poloing your friends, start getting used to speaking and just processing and, you know, talking on this thing. And it will help you when you have to do face to camera for your business on Instagram. Mm, That's such a great tip because it is, it really is like, especially being a business owner, like having to be seen, which we are such a visual world now, especially with like content creation and being on Instagram and all these apps, you know, um, you really have to allow yourself to be seen. And that's really uncomfortable for a lot of people, especially wow. I think people who are probably like 50 or more, you know, like they didn't grow up with it. Like I still didn't quite grow up with it, you know, because I didn't have Facebook until college. Um, and even after that it was like, you know, Instagram didn't start until what, like 2011, 2012. And so even for me, it's still been a hard thing to let myself be visually seen like that. And I still find myself sometimes like trying to like curate the way I show up in video, like, or using a filter or like getting the right angle and the lighting. And it's like, Marco Polo, I'm just being myself in in my environment, not worrying about what my chin looks like. (laughs) 
Yeah, and there's no filters. I don't think there's, there's no any fil filters. So you're like, you know, I, this I'm, is me. Up. I'm here. <laughs> well, there is fun filters. They're fun. Remember? Because oh, I was right. Like yes, you did those. Yes, the fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's just like fun, you know, like it also, it's like playful. You have to be playful it with it. But like yes. um, not having to like curate yourself in that way. Just very organic, authentic. I'm here. I'm showing up. I'm this is me. Yeah, it's just it's just building that consistency with that friend across the miles. I think it's really beautiful. And like you said, like I've now seen pretty much every room of Sam's apartment. Like when I walk in for the first time, because I'll probably I'm gonna go visit her in, in the early fall. But it's like if if I get the chance to walk through the apartment, I'll be like, Oh, now I kind of can see where the flow is. But like everything feels familiar to me already because like we're walking around our houses and or like, you know, I'm showing nature or like, I just love, it's just so fun to like. You're creating be... context and familiarity exactly. in that way, which in friendship, you know, you usually don't do unless you're in person. Right. Exactly. Where you're like, Hey, let's go walk this park. Well, here I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to talk and say, yo, I'm at the park, you know, whatever. It's like, it's fun. And I love that. I love that. Especially, you know, I've really, really been going through it the last number of months, mm -hmm. just like seven months of just like really brutal and Michelle would be in California visiting Michelle and be at the beach and just doing the cat you know just literally come on with the Marco Polo camera just on the beach and on the waves or you know on whatever Moment beautiful nature thing is happening I'm, I'm in the middle of New York City like there is not a lot of nature here I have to walk to the I mean it's close by but not like that you know so um just being able to share that is so amazing and so I'm uh, so appreciated too well and it's fun when you're like oh my friends are get you know my friends get different things obviously it's like it's our own little patreon you know it's like not the world the world doesn't see and get things like you know we're showing each other in that it's sort uh, of it's intimate it it's is a, it's, it's a more intimate, intimate experience of friendship private and personal yeah yeah it feels yeah. special and so it's, it's, it's really cool, but um, yeah, I'm really grateful for it all. And I'm grateful for the two of you. And, you know, I just, I love these types of conversations and, you know, keeping it going. So now we're going to need a group Marco Polo chat. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, I'd be totally up for that. And I think it would be great. You know, I mean, you mentioned Michelle, some, I haven't ever done groups, but I think you can do pretty big groups also on Marco Polo, like big there are, there are, um, I will tell you while you guys say something right now. Um, I'm looking at. Yeah, I ha I still haven't explored all the features. Like I'm pretty still new to it. It's been a couple of weeks since I started using it, so I still need to explore all the features and figure it all out. But um, that would be a really helpful tool, I think, for connecting with people. Like, you know, I even asked Michelle, like, is that something we could do for the podcast? Like, have a podcast group where people can just connect with us. 23 members on this one, but I will say it's a little much because mm. what happens with anything, I think, I think five or six people is, is a mm. really healthy 23. I'm, I will like go do something for like, I'll work for like a couple of hours and I'll come back and it's like 25 and I, that's overwhelming. Mm. Yeah. On. That would be and overwhelming for me too. Right. And depending upon like, if I just click on one and just to hear the tone a little bit, I'm like, oh God, I'm missing something good. Or you just feel like it's overwhelming. So I would say if you are um, in a girlfriend group or from college and you have like five or six girlfriends, I would just say minimize it like seven and under because otherwise it, you really do, do get overwhelmed and get lost with it. That's so good to know because like hearing you say that, I'm like, oh, that would already, that makes my brain implode just thinking about it. <laughs> yes, it, it, it would. But like, like groups of three, I have um groups of, I have a couple of groups of three and that seems to be really nice. And adding one more would be totally fine. Like, I feel like adding one extra person would be interesting. Mm, I yeah. like it. That's my pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle's pro tip of the day. <laughs> My pro tip. <laughs> All right, girls, I adore you and love you both so much. And I'm glad that we could share about Marco Polo. And I'm excited um, to share this with Marco Polo themselves and 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 allow give some links um, for people to try it out. Yeah, it's yeah. a gift. It is a gift. I mean, Marco Polo is a gift. I honestly don't know what I would do. I would have like no friends if I didn't have Marco Polo. 
<laughs> I mean, so, like really, my friends are all over the place. I just don't know what I would do. So yeah. it is a gift. It is a gift. It is a gift. Okay. Love you guys. Love, love you. you. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode today, be sure to subscribe and share because what do we say, baby? Sharing is caring. <laughs>